Welcome to the 15th episode of the Nordic Sports News Podcast. The world's first cross-country ski and biathlon podcast, with daily news from around the globe. We start our news today with the cross-country skiing world. Only a few days before the start of the season, the U.S. Ski and Snowboard Association unveils the list of athletes selected for this Olympic winter. Following the retirements of Sadie Bjornsson, Sophie Caldwell, and Simi Hamilton, the U.S. teams have been significantly rejuvenated for this season. Certainly the 30-something Jessica Diggins and Rosie Brennan are still in place but on the male side the new generation is needed. The 21-year-old Gus Schumacher, full of talent, should quickly stand out on the World Cup circuit, just like his pal J.C. Schoonmaker. According to Chris Grover, the national team director, the preparation went very well, the atmosphere is great and the overall level shown on the training camps was remarkable in every way. 2021 World Cup winner Jessica Diggins and all U.S. cross-country skiers will start their season at Ruka at the end of the month. Below the team's list. A team women. Rosie Brennan, Jesse Diggins, and Haley Swerble. A team men. Gus Schumacher and J.C. Schoonmaker. B. Team women. Julia Kern, Catherine Ogden and Sydney Palmer-Ledger. B. Team men. Kevin Bolger, Scott Patterson, and Logan Hammond. Development team women. Hannah Halverson, Novi McCabe, Kendall Kramer, Sophia Lockley. Development team men. Johnny Hagenbuch, Luke Jager, Noel Keefe, Zandon McMullen, Ben Ogden and Hunter Wonders. Cross-country coaches and staff. Cross-country program director, Chris Grover. Head coach, Matt Whitcomb. World Cup coach, Jason Cork. Now, on the wave of sustainability that awakens the planet, the International Ski Federation, FIS, wants to become the first sports federation fully committed to the environment. FIS has unveiled its plan to be, by 2022, totally eco-responsible in terms of carbon footprint. The International Ski Federation, FIS, announced today that it has taken steps to become, by 2022, the first climate-positive winter sports organization. In any case, this is the will of Johan Eliask, the new federation president. We have a duty to be a model in the field of sustainability and to take the lead in protecting our environment, assured the suite on the FIS website. For this, the International Ski Federation is counting on the FIS Rainforest Initiative, which will ensure that this commitment is respected. It will have to offset the carbon footprint provided for by competitions and other events by investing in the fight against deforestation, and in particular in the Amazonian forests, more specifically in Peru. FIS therefore aims for a completely neutral carbon footprint, and has also committed by 2030 to reduce its greenhouse gas emissions by 50%. Now, our eyes and ears turn to the long-distance cross-country ski events. Trans Organization, which organizes the long-distance ski race La Transjurassienne, part of World Lapid and Visma Ski Classics Challengers Calendars, changes its name and logo. Trans Organization becomes Transju today with some great new features. With La Transju, La Transju Jean and La Transju Trail, two new races will appear this season, La Transju Trail Blanche and La Transju Cyclo, respectively scheduled for December 2021 and August 2022. Global warming is significant. Hard but inevitable observation. Even if we are still able to organize events around skiing, we are fully aware that we must now subscribe to a logic of four-season sustainable development, explains Pierre Albert Vandal, the president of the association. Hence the reflection initiated with various stakeholders which resulted in the creation of these two events, including one dedicated to two-wheelers at the end of the summer. The Transju Trail Blanche, scheduled between Christmas and New Year's Day, will offer several race formats, from Chapelle des Bois to Morbier for the longest event, 17 km, from Bellefontaine to Morbier for the 7 km route or around Morbier for the White Walk, 5 km. The Marmots Transju Trail will bring participants from 6 to 14 years old, with distance depending on age. As for La Transju Cyclo, the event will offer courses adapted to different levels. On Sunday, August 28th, cyclists will be able to set off on an a la carte route with, for the most demanding, 155 km and 2.500 m of altimetry or 65 km and 1.000 m of altimetry. The association will also change its look, with a redesigned logo and a new name, La Transju. We have developed a new visual identity specific to our territory. The presence of spruce is a nod to our identity and to our heavily wooded area, says Pierre Albert Vandal. He also announces that with the Jura Mountains, the Grand Traverse du Jura and a Spas Nordique Jurassien, he is working on the project to materialize the route of the largest cross-country ski race in France, in each village and each emblematic place, 
information panels will highlight La Transjurassienne. The calendar for the Transju. December 29, 2021 La Transju Trail Blanche. January 26, 2022 La Transju Jeanne. 12 February 13, 2022 La Transju, Long Distance Cross Country Ski Race June 4-5, 2022 La Transju Trail. August 27-28 La Transju Cyclo. Still in France, but now with three new track openings for the season. This Saturday, November 13, a week after Bessens, Savoie, two Nordic Haute Savoyard areas will open cross country ski tracks, thanks to the snow farming technique. From 9 a.m., the places are at Gliers, with free access, and at Confines, La Clouses, where a special price will be set up for the opening. Also, the Nordic area of Saisis, Savoie, will open its doors this Thursday, November 11. Thanks to snow farming, the La Glacier track, 3 kilometers long will be open as early in the season in the resort of Julia Simon and Justine Brazes. Now, we have a couple of news from the biathlon world. Anatoly Kovantsev, former Russian biathlon team national director, foresees another difficult winter for the athletes of his country. 71-year-old Anatoly Kovantsev has rare experience in the world of biathlon. He worked for several decades in the heart of this discipline and has seen several generations of athletes. Asked by the RIA Novosti site before the start of the season, he first scratched the Russian selection system. For me it is an aberration to guarantee places two months before the first races. Only a biathlete who finished the previous year in the top 25 in the World Cup should have an insured ticket. For everyone else it would be better to earn their place on the track. Such a system blocks the way for the youngest, it is not good. The former chief national director continues by discussing the chances of Russian biathletes this winter and in particular at the Olympics. We will have our best chances in the relay because we can bring together two homogeneous teams but for the individual races, I am pessimistic. Before thinking about the podium, we should solve our speed problems on skis because we are very far from the best. Miranova skis fast enough but can't shoot, Loganov seems to me to have regressed. We still have Latipov, which is good and I am very close to Serikvostov. This guy showed great things on skis, he goes fast but for him, his concern is shooting. I hope he can get his chance as soon as possible. Kovantsev concluded. Now, our last news for the day. The Ukrainian men's biathlon team has been placed in isolation after one of its representatives tested positive for COVID-19. The announcement was made by the president of the Ukrainian Biathlon Federation, Vladimir Brinzak, on the internet. The biathletes are currently in training in Beitostolen, Norway. Contact cases, so far they have no symptoms. They have all been declared negative and are continuing their preseason training, but without mingling with the other nations present. They will resume a normal program in a week or so. And that's all for today folks. Stay tuned and subscribe to our channels on YouTube, Spotify and Instagram. Just type Nordic Sports News on these platforms and access our content. Thank you so much and see you tomorrow in the next episode. Information credits for Ski Nordique, Nordic Mag, US Ski and Snowboard, FIS, La Transju and Ria Novosti.